Hello students and today I am going to teach you about the how to graph the rational functions and what are the key features of the rational functions. So, so our success criteria is to find, uh, to graph the rational functions by analyzing the key features of the rational functions. When I talk about the key features, of course it means that I want to discuss the domain and range of the given function. I also want to talk about the x and the y intercepts of the functions. I am talking about some zeros of the function. I am also talking about the asymptotes or the holes of the function. So these are the key features which I have to discuss one by one. First of all, what are rational functions? Any function which is given in the form of a of x over b of x is said to be a rational function. You must know that the parent function of the rational function is 1 over x. It means all the functions have been originated by this parent. Now, if any of the polynomial is written on the top, for example, it will be x plus 2, x square minus 2, x square minus 16 or anything else. And some of the variable is written in the form, in any form in the denominator. Then this is said to be a rational function in the form of a of x over b of x. And by studying these functions, we will see and we will just put a, li put a light on the key features of the rational function. First of all, let's talk about the asymptote. And in the asymptotes, you must know that the asymptotes are the values which make my function undefined horizontally or vertically. Now, there are three types of the asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, which can be written as x equal to a, for example, horizontal asymptote, which will be written in the form of y equals to b, for example, and oblique asymptote, which can be written in the form of y equals to mx plus b, means oblique after after. Uh, drawing or sketching the oblique asymptote, we will get a symmetrical line in while graphing the rational function. Now, just have a look. How does they look like? Horizontal asymptote, which may be found by the horizontal line. Vertical asymptote can be represented by a vertical line. And oblique asymptote is a symmetrical slant line. Let's talk and discuss, first of all, vertical asymptote. So what do we understand by the vertical asymptote? For example, I have a question f of x equals to x plus 2 over x minus 4. This is my question. And you can see that there is a factor x plus 2 in the numerator and x minus 4 in the denominator. And I cannot cancel any of the factor from the numerator and denominator. So in this case, in order to study the vertical asymptote, we always focus in the denominator. Denominator and it should be equals to 0. We are trying to determine the x value which makes the function undefined. So bringing the negative 4 on the other side, it gives us the value as x equals to 4, which means that at x equals to 4, I will have a vertical asymptote. So vertical asymptote basically is the x value which makes the function undefined. It means that if I write here in place of this x4, I will get an, a mathematical error, which means my function at this point is undefined. So, with the help of the vertical asymptote, we can easily write our domain that it would have all real numbers except. So, let's solve one more question f of x equals to. Let's suppose it's x square 
minus 16 divided by x square plus uh, uh, plus x and minus 6. So what have you seen over here? Over here we have x square and in the denominator also we have an square. So what we will do first of all we will try to factor it. So the factors of the numerator are x plus 4 and x minus 4. Whereas the factors of the denominator are x plus 3 and x minus 2. Now you can see that none of the factor can be cancelled out. So here focus on the denominator. You can say x plus 3 and x plus x minus 2 equals to 0. Now solve one by one each factor. Let me see x plus 3 equals to 0. And one time write down x minus 2 equals to 0. Now on solving for x, we will get x equals to negative 3. And if we bring the negative 2 on the other side, we will get x equals to 2. So you can see over here that here you will have two vertical asymptotes. One at x equals to negative 3 and the other one at x equals to 2. So what are the, what is the domain in this case? So in this case, the domain is all real numbers except negative 3 and 2. So all the numbers are included. You can write in the equation and you will get an answer. But if once you will put negative 3 or the 2, you will get the math error. Let's try to solve more questions and we will see the behavior of the vertical asymptote in the question. So for example, I have a question f of x equals to x square. For example, it will be plus, uh, plus 20 and plus 9x. And in the denominator, it is x square minus 16, for example. So now the first thing is, in order to find out the vertical asymptote, it is very important to factor the numerator and the denominator one by one. So on factoring the numerator, we will get x plus 4 and x plus 5 because 4 times 5 gives me 20 and 4 plus 5 gives me plus 9. And on factoring x square minus 16, I know I have to put the value, put the formula a square minus b square equals to a plus b and a minus b. And here in this case, b square is your 16. So a square root of 16 is 4. So one time I will write x minus 4 and one time I will write x plus 4. And if you have any problem in solving or in factoring, use the calculator. Otherwise, Watch my videos which I already have uploaded regarding the factoring trinomials and binomials. Okay, now what have you observed that there is a factor x plus 4 common in denominator and numerator. So you can cancel them very easily. Now the factor that cancelled is not a vertical SM2. Is not a vertical SM2. So, what is it? We will see later on. But first of all, complete the vertical asymptote and understand that the factor that cancelled out is not a vertical asymptote. Although it makes the function undefined, but it is not a vertical asymptote. So, where is the vertical asymptote? Now, again, focus in the denominator, but don't take the cancelled part. Only take the only take the part that is not cancelled out, that is x minus 4, make it equals to 0 and then solve for x, bring the negative 4 on the other side, you will get x equals to 4 and this is your vertical asymptote. Let's solve one more question in order to clear our concepts. For our example, x squared minus uh, 9 and we might have x squared minus x plus 6. So I'm taking just an easy example to make you understand. So x squared minus 9 factor the first thing that you will get x plus 3 and x minus 3 by applying the binomial formula. 
x square minus x plus 3, you will get x minus 3 and x plus 2 plus cos plus 2 times negative 3 gives you negative 6 and negative 3 positive 2 gives you negative 1. So now here what have you focused that x minus 3 and x minus 3 are common. So they will be cancelled from the numerator and denominator and it is not a vertical asymptote. Focus on the denominator only. Now only x plus 2 is left and which will give you equals to 0 and solve for x that means x equals to negative. So this is the way how we solve the rational fun how we take out the rational functions vertical asymptote and how we find out the domain. So in this case the domain is all real numbers except okay except this negative 2 which is your vertical asymptote and also if you put this 3 in the question you will get an error so this 3 also write down although it is not a vertical asymptote but this 3 is not uh, included in the domain now what is it we will see in the next video till then understand this concept if you don't understand or if you have any doubts just rewind the video see one more time if you have any comments please do let me know so that i can make uh, i can solve more examples in order to clear your doubts and if you like the video if you like the explanation give me thumbs up thank you so much